Hey, I'm Ian. Uh, I used to work upstairs and about 50 meters that way. Uh, I now work for a, a startup called Ask Inline. Um, I recently went on holiday to celebrate the fact that I was leaving from up there and have a bit of a break before I jumped into the startup life. Um, and I went on holiday to Vietnam with uh, a fellow developer, Isaac, who has also spoke here, but like two or three years ago before he left to go to Austin. Um, so, you know, we, we went out, uh, went to Vietnam, we ate a lot of food, and uh, the typical thing to do when you're on holiday with a fellow developer is to air grievances and basically complain about the state of tooling and the things that have caused you to lose days and days of your lives uh, for no really good reason. So we were venting about NPM. Um, we uh, were chatting about it. Both of us had hit a bunch of problems with NPM over the past month or two, um, and that was the, the great topic over lunch. Um, the first pain point that I had a lot of problems with was uh, NPM's tendency to download the world. So um, who has looked at how big their node modules folder is and gone, oh shit, I might need to buy a bigger hard drive? <laughs> Okay, uh, so this is a bit of a problem locally in terms of space, but uh, the bigger problem that we faced with it at Atlassian was uh, in our CI builds. So we'd find that every so often a node or GitHub, uh, NPM or GitHub or someone would rate limit us or uh, we'd have a little network hiccup and then we'd find that every single one of our builds would fail across all of our branches and we'd go, we'd look up at the wallboard and go, ah, oh, NPM again, okay, I guess we have to press the rerun button. Um, and it was a real pain for us, a massive pain point. Um, some of it was caused by us being on an older version of Node with NPM, but some of it was just caused by the way that M NPM does things. I also had some problems recently with what I call hatted dependencies. Uh, they're the like carrot range dependencies. Um, I, I use a Webpack for, for Ask Inline. Who here is using Webpack? All right, so I was using a Webpack version 1.12 with a hatted dependency. Now, uh, Webpack released a 1.13, which is apparently, which is within the semantic version range, but it had a fun little bug where the iframe for your web, Webpack dev server was not at the right Z index. So suddenly I'd run npm install and I'd go back to my app and I couldn't click inside my app, which was a really fun one to kind of track down. But it's kind of part of the problem. You'd like, okay, I want to bump something, and then you'd suddenly pull in all these other changes, but you wouldn't really realize. Um, and shrink wrap is kind of designed to help work around this problem. However, um, the shrink wrap file doesn't have any sane ordering to it, so it's really hard to read and understand, okay, what actually just got changed. Um, and the, the main problem that Isaac had run into was that he was battling with an internal library that hadn't used dev dependencies. Uh, the person responsible was probably in this room, so sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's part of the problem is that you depend on these other libraries to do the right thing and do things in the node way, uh, the NPM way. And if they decide to just put all their dependencies at the top level instead of putting them inside dev dependencies for the things that they only re rely on in dev, suddenly you do an NPM install and you've pulled in all this other junk debug JavaScript or you're compiling image magic because you did an NPM install and you have to try and track down which one of the dependencies or transient dependencies has decided to do something stupid today. Um, so uh, we had this nice little rant and I was like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to CJS, I'm going to give a lightning talk, I'm going to rant about NPM, going to talk about some of the solutions that we came up with for some of these little problems, and it'll be great. So I submitted it to Sharky, he's like, okay, you're locked in. And then, uh, yeah, overnight, uh, Yarn came out, and uh, uh, Isaac sent it through on Facebook. Um, yeah, so suddenly I have to do a talk about Yarn, I guess, because... <laughs> We, we've just been talking about the fact that if we're having these problems, then some of the larger companies that are also using NPM, like Google and Facebook, must also be having these problems. And it should, there should be a better way to do these kinds of things or a better solution that is a bit more holistic to, to some of these problems. And uh, yeah, it was super popular because there's a lot of people with these problems. So I took a bit of a look. So uh, yeah, some of the advantages of Yarn, it has a global cache. Um, so it's similar to Maven. Who here in the room has used Maven before? 
all of the Atlassians put up their hands and some of the Google people, I guess. Um, it has a global case directory, which means that if you npm install a version of something in one project and then you try and use it in another project, it's not going to use up more of your hard drive space. Now, this is kind of nice for when you're working on the train and you want to start a new project or something, but the, the bigger advantage is for CI servers, like we were talking about before, you can actually bundle up all your dependencies and put them into the build image, um, the build server image, and suddenly you don't have to download those dependencies ever again. It's kind of nice from a performance standpoint. It's also deterministic. So it has a, a idea of a lock file, which is very, very similar to the npm shrink wrap file, but a little bit better. It has, the, has a sane ordering to it, so it always orders in the same way, and it's very easy for you to be able to read the diff and understand, okay, I bumped this, but as a result, I've actually changed these five other versions of things. So the, going back to the Webpack example, I would have been able to very easily see, okay, I accidentally updated Webpack, let's go check out why Webpack is broken for that version. Um, so this also speeds up the, the downloads because it's much easier for Yarn to be able to read the log file and understand exactly what it needs to download, which means that we get much better network efficiency. It, it can parallelize a lot of the downloads. Um, it has sensible retry logic. It has timeouts. There's a, there's a bunch of really nice stuff in there, which means that things should install faster, which is really nice. So should you use it or should I use it? Um, it's kind of new, so uh, there's a lot of issues uh, being raised at the moment. Um, some of the bugs are a little worrying. I logged on today and the top newest bug was, uh, it deleted the parent directory. Um, <laughs> So that's a little bit scary. Uh, so I'd probably say maybe not put it on to your production stuff straight away. <laughs> However, um, they did just bring out a new version. So this was released, uh, like Yarn itself was released uh, just a couple of weeks ago. They've, the community has had an amazing response. Um, they've been accepting pull requests and working with the community pretty deeply. And this is the release notes for for that version and there's just shitloads of stuff that's been getting fixed and a really great response from the community so uh, I think that in a couple of months time it's going to be a really solid uh, solution so thanks.